Next is going to be Nazreen and Joseph, who are doing a double feature. <laughs> um, yeah, they kind of, uh, I, I, I spent time with them last year at Recurse Center and they were uh, working a lot on this. And I'm actually very amazed that they spent like since last year, the whole year kind of, uh, to me, it's at least sounded like this, uh, met every couple of weeks online and worked on what they will be presenting now. And I'm expecting a lot of puns. May the fourth be with you. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. So um, I'm Joseph. This is Nazreen. Um, we're going to talk about fourth today. Um, so uh, it's a peculiar language, but it's something we've learned a lot from, um, at least in our case. It's not working. Oh, really? Even closer? <laughs> okay. <here. laughs> <laughs> so we're going to tell you about the four parts of fourth um, with some examples. Um, some things about how the, the internals of fourth are similar and different to other languages, and then some things that we learned while we were learning fourth. Um, okay, so closer. Um, so the fourth part to fourth that Nazreen just spoke about are, are the stack. So this is where uh, we push parameters. Um, the return stack, which keeps track of uh, where you are in a function or a loop. Um, the dictionary, where fourth programs live, and the input stream, which is sort of uh, your program being read in. So on the, on the right, um, wait, on your left, we have an expression. Oh, can you hear me now? Is this close enough? Yeah, okay. Um, and on the right, we have how you'd write that in fourth. So that's actually a fourth program, a very small one. Um, and if we, so we could, we could store that, that text either in a fourth file or we could type it into the, into the, the terminal. Um, and we would then pass it to the interpreter. It would become the input stream. Um, Thanks. Yeah, no, that's great. Thanks. Um, and the fourth interpreter takes each token of the input stream um, separated by a space. That's how it knows where the tokens are. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is my side. So, um, so like Nazreen said, we have the program on the, on your left hand side. Um, and, and so we're going to walk through this. Um, the parameter stack on the side is what I spoke about earlier. Um, so the number three or the literal three uh, in the program pushes the number three to the stack. Uh, the literal two pushes uh, a two to the stack. So you can see we have a three and a two on the stack now. Um, and a plus is going to pop those values, um, add them together, and then push their result. Um, so we, we saw the plus um, word. Um, so, so numbers are sort of literals that go in the stack. Um, we have operations, and everything else is a word in fourth. Um, and so we have some words that um, just manipulate the stack. So, so the dupe here, um, the first one, um, takes something like three, two, one, and it'll push a duplicate um, of the top of the stack um, to the top of the stack. Uh, a drop is going to drop, do what it says, and it'll drop the, the first thing that's on the stack. So if you had a three, two, one, you'll end up with a three, two. Um, and then we have rot, which kind of shifts things um, towards the bottom of the stack. Um, and pushes pushes the thing that was three places down to the top. Um, so we kind of we can see that in action. Uh, we have a two, or sorry, we have a one. We push a two, a three, um, and then we do a dupe, um, which you can probably just about see. Um, and then the dot s is going to print the stack we have currently, and you can see the duplicate three um, at the top. So. Um, like Joseph said, all uh, functions and variables in fourth are called words, and words are stored in the dictionary. Um, and, and that's words that are built into the language, so things like dupe and drop that we saw just now, um, and also words that you define yourself are also stored in the same dictionary. Um, yeah, oh, so, oh, wait, go back. Yeah. So you can see the the... This, each, each entry in the dictionary has the same structure. It has the name, which you can see the DAT at the top is the start of the name of that entry. And then it has some other information that the interpreter adds. And then it has the, the body of the, of the word, which is the code pointer and the 12. Um, yeah. 
Okay, so we're going to show you how to write um, a fourth word of your own. So this is a small program. Um, we're going to work on squaring squaring the number four. So if we work backwards, um, we're going to need a four on the stack. So how do we get that there? Okay, not quick. In ah, yeah, enter the four um, in the program. Um, so we have that four there. Um, and then if we keep, keep going, we're going to want... Um, oops, that went too far. Okay, we're going to want two, <laughs> two fours on, on the parameter stack. And so how do we do that? Yep, we do. Um, and then we want a 16, so we times. Um, and we, we have our program there. Um, and is this me or you? Okay. <laughs> so this is how we define the word in, in fourth. We have the semicolon, which starts the definition or tells the interpreter to switch to compile mode. And then the name of the word, which is square, and then the body of the word, which is dupe star or dupe multiply. And then the semicolon ends the definition or switches out of compile mode. Um, yeah, so you can compile words while you're interpreting, which is pretty cool. Oh, and, and then this is how it would look if we defined it in, in fourth. Um, so we put the four on the stack because it's the parameter for the word square. Um, so it goes onto the parameter stack and then we call square and square takes the four and gives us 16. And the dot is to print something from the stack. So then we get 16. Okay, so um, so whereas most, most other languages have, um, have a stack that has stack frames, which keep track of um, parameters and where you are in your program. Um, so return addresses, uh, program, ooh, fourth is a little different. So in fourth, um, it uses stacks the same way as other languages, but it's different because there's two distinct stacks, one for parameters and one for um, addresses. And they're, they're dictionary addresses. Um, and the other cool thing is that you can, you can manipulate the stacks directly. So you use the parameter stack when you push numbers, but you can also use the return stack in your programs for addresses or for anything you want. Um, so what does fourth have um, in common with other more familiar languages? Um, and this actually, I've been struggling to, to find um, uh, what it was for days now. And I just realized what it was, but I'll tell you towards the end. Um, anyway, so there is a dictionary. This is where fourth programs live. This is sort of like the text and data section of, um, of other programming languages. And it's a bit like the heap too, because you can kind of compile things um, as you're running um, the fourth interpreter. Um, and so it, it kind of grows dynamically in size. Um, there are constants and variables, and again, these live on the dictionary. Um, and um, so yeah, we saw stacks, how um, it's similar to how other languages use stacks, but also a bit different. Um, and then branching, which is um, loops or if statements or returning from functions, it, it looks a little bit different in fourth, but it's fundamentally the same as in other languages. Um, it uses addresses to um, either jump to something or return from something. Um, and the other thing that's the same um, is that it's always only at most um, a byte, like you only ever have two choices. It's a binary choice. You can either jump somewhere else or you can keep going, um, which is the same as, as all programming languages. And the thing I just realized is um, if we go back here, uh, where we talked about having two stacks and being able to manipulate them is that you can create your own control control constructs. Um, so I just remembered that. I wanted that all week. Um, okay, so what did we learn about learning? Um, so um, for us, it was sort of a story about taking it slowly, understanding things, um, and sort of the insight that um, putting a little bit of effort or a lot of effort in upfront um, pays off big time down the line. Um. And so also that if you, like, if something seems really difficult, you can, like, it's still something that you can learn. Um, and maybe you just need different strategies to learn it. Um, and then you can learn it. And also that learning with other people and learning cooperatively is, is really great. Uh, so may the fourth be with you. <laughs>